You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are continuing our international series today, talking with our international partners and friends who serve the Lord in Germany today, yes. which with Bach Week behind us now, I should be able to pronounce all these things in German just you fine. Should, but should, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we have friends in Germany to, to help us with those things. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, friends serving the Lord in Germany, Deaconess Kim Beltman. Deaconess Kim, welcome back to the Coffee Hour. Thank you. Good to be here. And you also have a, a new partner in serving the Lord in Germany. Joining us today, Rachel Krause. Rachel, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I am excited to learn about how the Lord has given you all to serve in Germany, the, the ways that you're, you're serving. And I, I know Rachel fairly new to, to this position and looking forward to learning about that as well. Kim, for those who haven't caught your story before, can you share with us just the, 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 the brief version of how the Lord brought you to serve in Germany? Oh, the brief version. Sure. Maybe we could do the full version, but um. <laughs> it might take a little, little long. But yeah, I mean, it's it's something that I feel like he kind of prepared me for throughout my life. And I had served in a Deaconess internship here in Germany many years ago. And after serving at Concordia, Wisconsin for a number of years and doing some mission trips with students and just always kind of being reminded of that love that I had for, for sharing the gospel with those who had yet to hear it, I was led back to Germany to serve refugees who are coming here from the, the Middle East. Mostly the group that we serve is wow. from Iran and Afghanistan. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, is that brief enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll suffice. <laughs> Rachel, what about you? This is your this is your first time sharing your story with us on the coffee hour. One of these in one of these episodes. How how did the Lord bring you to Germany? Yeah, well, kind of similar to Kim. Germany's always been uh, on my heart, and I, you know, tried to get over to Germany as often as I could. So I uh, spent a summer as a music intern at one of our LCMS uh, mission churches in Frankfurt for the summer when I was in college, and then I. Uh, a few years later, I returned spending the year um, as an au pair with a German family to work on my German fluency. And then things just kind of worked out well that I could come back and serve as a missionary and work with Kim and Pastor Hugo to work with the met, uh, refugees. So exciting stuff. What does that look like serving with serving with refugees in and you're in the Leipzig area, correct? Yes. So what is that? What are you learning in, in preparation to, to serve with the refugees in the Leipzig area? A lot of stuff. I, yeah, I don't know. Kim said that there's just so much with that we can do. And here in Leipzig, especially there's with the pandemic, things have been closed, but now we're starting to open again, which is really exciting. So I'm trying to get prepared and Kim's helping me learn kind of more about how to do that working with some Persians, learning the language, and just kind of figuring out how things are going. So, Kim, what is the, the, what is the, the work that you get to do on a daily basis serving the, the refugees in Leipzig look like? Sure. I mean, there's a, a wide variety of needs that, that they have when they come to us. A lot of times when they're brand new in the country, they don't know German yet. Some some of them might know some English, but so I've been working on Persian for a few years now and I'm able to hold basic conversations and, and kind of walk them through some of the basics of what they need to do to, to be able to stay in Germany. So helping them through, sift through documents that they get from the government that they need to kind of figure out what to, what kind of things they need to submit to receive asylum. We go with them to court hearings. We go with them to other kinds of appointments. Maybe they need help translating at the doctor or various things, looking for apartments, looking for jobs, helping them learn German. There's, you know, all those kinds of things. And also while they're kind of waiting for the process to uh, go through for their asylum, there is not much they can do. They can't, they can't, aren't allowed to work. So they're hanging out in the refugee homes and they don't have much to do. So providing some sense of, 
of purpose for them, offering things for them to do, helping out at church. And they come to baptism classes and learn about the gospel. And they, we work, yeah, as I mentioned, work with them on their German. We have an art group where they can come and kind of process what they've been through, through art and express their new faith in art. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, kind of never, never dull moment and always a lot of needs to to meet and to walk with them through. And yeah, so just kind of being there, being with them in their daily lives and helping them navigate the, the German legal system and living here in Germany. <laughs> so. What are some of the the challenges that the last year and a half have brought to to all of this work that you're doing? I can imagine that there's been uh, some some difficulties that the, the pandemic has presented. Oh, very much so. Yes, we have been locked down for you know a majority of the time. We had a kind of a brief window where we were we were able to reopen and have some of the activities again, but we were very limited as far as numbers that we were allowed to welcome into our space because. It's our church is big, but we, our, our community center is not huge. So we, we were kind of limited there. So we turned to a lot of online things. Some of the people were scared to even come out because of the pandemic. So we were offering, we've been live streaming our services since the pandemic began. We have been doing more video content. I was teaching confirmation classes to actually Persian children on Zoom. And we were doing a baptism class for Persian adults on Zoom and doing a lot of things so that we could kind of get around that. But all those day-to-day needs, the people that were like looking for apartments or the people that really, really desperately need to work on their language skills, those were things we could, that we usually, you know, we have our doors open at the community center. They can come in and gather and drink tea and we can kind of take turns helping different people. Well, that, that wasn't possible anymore. So it made it, extremely challenging and and very time intensive because then we still wanted to work with those people and help them but it was a lot more going individually so i i had a number of people that i would be helping and i'd go look at apartments with them so that they could communicate with the the owners and um help them apply and and it was instead of like people coming here and saying okay well, let's help you all in turn it was going for example, two women that really are struggling with the language that have been here for a number of years, but are just still having a lot of, of struggles. Now, I instead of them coming to Brooklyn, and I spend an hour with them during the day when we're there, there, I have to drive. It's an hour just to drive to where they live and back. And then I'm spending an hour working with them on German at their in their home. And then they, of course, can't have me in their home for just an hour to practice German. So they want to have a whole meal. So it turns into like what used to be maybe one hour of my day is now like a whole day event. (laughs) So so there's been a lot of hurdles and, you know, learning new technologies and figuring out ways to to reach people. But yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's definitely been a challenge. So, but we continue. It sounds like relationships, (laughs) relationships are are a very key part of uh, building those relationships. Mm -hmm. It's a very key part of what you're doing. Absolutely. However, you're working in multiple cultures and languages here. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can you help us understand some of the challenges that you face and 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 also some of the joys of of yeah. being in in culture within a culture or cultures oh, that yeah. overlap? You, yeah. I don't know how you how you would ex- even describe that. Yeah, it's it is definitely another added challenge and just extremely fascinating, you know, I think I've talked with you before about that, that I I had been in Germany on my internship and felt like, you know, I kind of understood Germans a little bit, you know, and then I came to the former East and and the Germans here are maybe a little different. And then on top of that, you have the Persian culture getting mixed in. And I I would say the two cultures have, you know, many, many differences and, (laughs) you know, Germans are pretty punctual. Persians are a little bit more relaxed in that area and, you know, just different, a lot of differences and, and just the way they interact. Persians are usually more upfront, kind of just warm right away, but maybe they won't stick around, but the Germans maybe are slow to warm up, but then they're like your friend for life. So there's kind of like all these differing aspects. So then we have the three missionaries that are here working as the pastor Hugo, who 
came from South Africa and that's where he was born and raised. And then we have Rachel and myself coming from the United States and we're trying to kind of be this bridge, you know, to help. And that's the name of our outreach center, the bridge, the We're trying to help the Persians kind of find their way in this German society and kind of bridge, like a bridge between these two different, very, very differing groups of people and trying to find ways to unite them in our congregation and in the church and in the community. So yeah, it's a, it's definitely, I mean, Google and I every day are constantly kind of language flipping with each other. (laughs) So if I, if I start talking to him in German and I don't think he's hearing me or he's, (laughs) I'll switch to English or Persian until I get get him to respond. (laughs) It's like, what language are you thinking in right now? How can I reach you? (laughs) So. Uh, Do you find yourself thinking in different languages? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's uh, for for the most part, there's kind of like this automatic switch where depending on who I'm talking to, that's the language that comes out. But sometimes it comes out mixed or jumbled or, you know, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it's pretty fun. (laughs) Rachel, I know you've only been there a few weeks. How's how are languages coming along? It, it they're coming there. My German definitely needs some practice. It's a little bit rusty since the last time I was here and used it, but I'm able to keep up a little bit when Kim and Pastor Hugo are speaking either in German or English, but I'm still working on uh, learning Farsi, so <laughs> got a ways to go on that. <laughs> <laughs> Lots to learn. Yeah. I'm excited to learn about the, the cultural aspect as well, what you're learning about the cultures. We'll do that in just a moment. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are continuing our international series, talking with our international partners, Serving the Lord in Germany. We're talking with Deaconess Kim Biltman and Rachel Krause, both Serving the Lord in Leipzig. And before we went to break, we were talking about learning the language. Kim, you've been there a while and still working on learning the language and developing those language skills, particularly your Persian skills. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, fairly new to the area, had a background in German now, also working on those Persian or Farsi skills as well. What about about the, the cultural, since you're working in multiple cultures, what's that like, Rachel, learning about multiple cultures at one time? I know you had some experience with German culture, but now also learning about Persian culture as well. What's What have you been learning so far? Oh, there's uh, just a lot of stuff, I suppose. It's hard to say just a few things even about that, but kind of what Kim was saying about what each each culture values is it seems very at odds with one another. Kim gave the example earlier of time and punctuality and things, and I'm I'm starting to notice that I since I've only been here about two weeks, I definitely haven't observed as much as as Kim. But I'm looking forward to learning more and uh, about both both of these cultures. So yeah. What are some of the things you've been able to do? I know it's only been a couple of weeks, but are there things that, that you've been able to to do working uh, working with the, these refugees in Leipzig? Well, since we're we're just about to reopen our our community center full time, we've not been able to do do a whole lot. So I'm looking forward to in uh, the next couple of days seeing what what I can actually do with my limited language skills and things. But so far, I've been uh, able to learn a few words from the Persians, which is really fun to have them try to teach me some some basic things like hello and goodbye or things like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's just there's a lot to learn and I'm I'm really excited to to find out more. So mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Kim, you mentioned uh, the, the building in this process of over the last year, building these relationships with people, having to kind of kind of flip that on, on, its, on its head, going out to meet people instead of bringing them into the community center. You mentioned tea being part of this. Is, is tea an important part of Persian culture? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they <laughs> love tea or chai, as it's called in Persian and several other languages, I understand. But yeah, chai is a huge, huge part of their culture and can't get away from from the house without having a cup of chai. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Are there other parts of, of Persian culture that you've come to really enjoy and, and love? And, and now it's kind of something that, that is a part of your normal life. Sure, sure. They have obviously uh, delicious food and they are a very hospitable and just very warm and and friendly and fun loving. They they seem to be very artistic and poetic and kind of, you know, sensitive in that in that way and uh, yeah, they're they're a lot of fun fun to be around and yeah, they're just yeah, it's been it's it's been fun as the things are slowly reopening and more and more of them are feeling confident enough to come to church in person just being able to to have that time after church services now again which we had we didn't have chai after church for a while and just in the past couple weeks we've been able to start that up again and be able to to visit with people longer after church and and it's been really really fun to because it that you know we really missed that over these this last year and a half to to have all that interaction with them so it's mm -hmm. yeah they're definitely special they're special people so What's the the connection or the involvement of the congregation to the outreach? Are members of the congregation involved much with the outreach, or is it primarily just the the, the work of you and Rachel and Pastor Hugo? It's it's primarily um, Rachel and Hugo and I. Hugo was able to meet with the board of elders from the church recently in kind of a one day retreat that they had to discuss you know the work that we're doing, and it sounds like going forward that they're really very much interested in trying to be more involved. So what one of the things that we're doing, because right, we've been having worship services in the Persian language. And then once a month, we do a combined service in German and Persian so that there's a little bit more interaction between the two groups. And the our, our previous program where we were open kind of all day for for them to come with issues and questions and Bible study and baptism class, that used to be on a Wednesday. And one of the things as we talked with the elders uh, was they wondered if we might try that on a Sunday where we could be there all day on Sunday with the group and do a lot of those activities then. And that actually will make it easier. We were kind of contemplating doing that anyway um, because some of the like refugee homes are further out and it it's expensive for them to maybe get a train into town. and so to come in on two different days was maybe a challenge. And we also have a group in Chemnitz that we're serving as well, which is about 60 miles away. And we were doing worship services in, we have been doing Leipzig and Chemnitz both on Sundays. And then that made it really challenging because after church, we'd race off to Chemnitz. And then I always felt bad because there would maybe still be people with lingering questions and needing help with something. And we were like, oh, we got to get to Chemnitz now, sorry. And so now we're going to actually do a full day on Saturday in Chemnitz where we do our worship services there on Saturday and have when we're there for just open community center time where they can come with questions. We can have Bible study. We can do all those kinds of things and then do the same on Sundays. And the Germans, uh, what they really want to do is have then like a church coffee hour together with the Persians so that they can be more involved and get to know them better and 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 be more a part of things. So we're looking forward to seeing how that develops here. That that's actually starting this coming weekend. So, oh, good. How has all of this uh, this work expanded since you've been to since you've been in in Germany? You mentioned the <laughs> the group in Chemnitz now. How how has all of that been going? Yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's going pretty well. I mean, it definitely <laughs> kind of felt questionable over the past year and a half, as you can imagine, where just where things are just more difficult and we weren't able to see as many people as often and all those kinds of things. So, but 
but I'm really feeling a sense of excitement as things are uh, reopening and, and we're able to do more. And the group in Chemnitz was always kind of steadily growing. And a lot of the members there were uh, really actively sharing the gospel in the refugee camps in that area and inviting more and more people and wanting to do more and more. So that's that's something that we actually, the re- the outreach center that we have there in Chemnitz is fairly new. We started renting the building at the beginning of 2020, and then we really weren't able to have it open. So that was kind of a disappointment that we, we had finally gotten our own space there because we were basically in a, in a borrowed church building. So we had a church that was letting us use their space for worship, and that's all we really had there. But because they were really seeming to be so excited about wanting to do more there, and there's not a Zelk congregation in Chemnitz, so that's why we from Leipzig go to do services there. And then usually about once a month, there's a pastor from Dresden that comes to do a service there just to help out. So now we'll be able to go there. We're going to be going there every Saturday and having this open. We're finally going to be able to open the community center there and have more time for the people there to to really be more present. So I think it'll be, I think, yeah, we're really excited about it. I think it'll be a really good thing. So, You've mentioned having services in Farsi. What does that actually look like? Because uh, our, our Lutheran service book isn't published in Farsi. No, uh, how no. How are you able to do <laughs> services in, in a, in a, in a diff- very different language than anything that our resources are published in? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not yet. I basically got enough now on my computer that I think we probably could soon. And that's kind of a, a long-term goal that we have is to, to put something together the liturgy that we use is probably what you would recognize as very much like TLH, page five and 15 type of thing. So mm-hmm. because that's basically what the, the Delk uses here, very, very similar. So you would you would recognize the tunes, you would recognize, you would be able to follow it very, very easily. <laughs> there are some parts of the liturgy, though, that our own Persian musicians have taken the biblical text and maybe set it to a Persian melody. So, so it's kind of a, a mix. So we, we follow the liturgy that you all would recognize. And I've been slowly building up uh, more and more songs for us to use in worship from different hymns that have been translated or original Persian songs that we found or that our members have written. So it's kind of been, you know, slowly, the, the Persian services have been slowly developing and and becoming, I think, better and better uh, over time. And we've been able to really build that up. So it's, uh, I, I, I think it's a really special experience. And yeah, I, th- I think any of you, well, we, we also put the German on the, we use the screen because we don't have a hymnal yet. So we put everything on the screen in Persian and in German and actually now in English too. So we have, so it's all there. You'd be able to follow right along. <laughs> So. There's like three columns on the, <laughs> yeah, on yeah. the screen. <laughs> we, it's usually like German and Persian side by side at the top and then a little bit smaller on the bottom is the English. So so we do get wow. English speaking visitors. And since we've been live streaming, we do have some English speakers that like to watch our live stream. So, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And just knowing your your background with German language and music and the the mercy work of deaconesses and all that combined in in the the gifts that God has given you. It's really neat to see that now being used in the service in Germany. So that's that's so encouraging. Rachel, what are you looking forward to most in the in the year to come working alongside with Deaconess Kim? Oh, there's a lot of stuff, but I'm also kind of musically inclined. So I'm, I'm looking forward to learning from Kim how to use uh, Persian music, incorporate that into worship services and, and just make it so that everybody can have an enjoyable um, time praising God in, in worship. Well, I have enjoyed learning so much about how the Lord has given you both to serve in Germany and the, the people you get to serve and the, the culture and the, just so many things that, that make up the ways that you're given to serve there. Our guest today, Deaconess Kim Biltman and Rachel Krause. Kim, thanks so much for being our guest. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. And Rachel, thanks so much for joining us on the Coffee Hour today. Thanks for having us. It's been fun. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.
The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.